Are you kidding? That's normal. That is not. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura or Laura X Stitches and this is my April update. Um, I hope you're doing really well. I have um, my washing machine going. So if you hear that, I do apologize. Two dogs that are sleeping, but you guys know what that's like. They may be awake soon. <laughs> uh, hopefully they can be nice and quiet. Um, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, it's Saturday, um, the 28th of April. It feels like it's getting darker, but it shouldn't be. We should be okay with light. I've got a few windows around. I hope you enjoyed my liquor cabinet. Let's talk about what's been happening this month. Um, full disclosure, I've recorded this once already and I didn't like it. So I'm doing it again. Um, I have been on a cruise, as you probably know from my last video. Um, if you're new, welcome. I went on a cruise. Um, I had the school holidays um, from Easter odd ones for two weeks and then I had another week off. Um, we had to fly to Brisbane, um, which was about two hours away. Um, and we stayed overnight the day before and um, we woke up and we could see the ship. So we just walked across to the ship um, and hopped on and we were on there for a week. So it was awesome. I recommend cruises to everybody. Um, everything's done for you. So <laughs> you don't have to do anything. It's amazing. Um, we went to a few different places. So we had um, about two days sailing um, to start with. And then we arrived at a place called Namia, which is in New Caledonia. Um, by the way, if you want to skip this part, I would jump to probably about five, seven minutes in and see where we're up to. Um, yeah, so we went to Namia in New Caledonia. We were only there for about four hours because we got there at about four o'clock and then we had to leave by 8.30. So um, it was a really quick trip. We um, we're there on a Sunday and it was a bit dead. Like it was a bit, everything was closed, but there was lots of people out still. So that was good. Um, there was places like the aquarium and things that we wanted to go to, but, um, we were there too late to do that. So that was a bit disappointing, but, um, it was all right. Like we went along the beach, beautiful sunset, um, lovely water because it's so tropical. So that was nice. Um, I'd go back, um, if... I was get going there earlier in the day or on a weekday. Otherwise, I'd probably stay on the ship, to be perfectly honest, because I might go for a walk, but I probably wouldn't do what we did and go on a bus and stuff. Um, then we went to, the next day we arrived at a place called Mare. Um, some people call it Mari, so I'm not 100% sure what it is. Still in New Caledonia, just a different um, section. We um, couldn't port there because the port was too small so we had to get um, anchor get on lifeboats uh, like the tenders and head on over to the port and then we caught a bus for about 15 minutes to the beach and it was beautiful we did our snorkeling and swimming there and the water is like glass mm, maybe not like glass but it's it's this the light blue color you kind of associate with tropical waters so it was awesome Really loved it there. Um, Matt's, so I went with Matt, his brother, girlfriend, his brother's girlfriend, I mean, not Matt's girlfriend. That's me. Um, and his parents. So Matt's brother actually proposed to his girlfriend while we were at, while we were there. We weren't there. Um, we'd gone back by that point, but um, they came back on the boat and they told us, and it was awesome. The next day we went to Port Villa in Vanuatu. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, we went to a waterfall, which was lovely. That's where the water was like glass. It was so clear. And then we went to a place called Blue Lagoon, which as you can imagine was very blue water. And that was probably my favorite spot to swim. I really liked it there. And then we went and did some duty free shopping. And I bought myself a ring. It's from Pandora. It was um, slightly cheaper than I would have got it here. Um, and then we got back on the boat and then we had two days sailing and then we were home uh, very early Friday morning. So that was the cruise. 
Um, I, like I said, I loved it. I really want to go on one with my parents and my family. Um, I think my dad would really enjoy it. I'd love to go on one uh, with them. What else has been happening? Um, I wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that liked the trailer in my last video for Fricks. Um, Fricks is fluffy rainbow unicorn kawaii stitches and it's a Facebook group and I made a trailer for the group because it's quite new um, and lots of people liked it so if you want to go and see that check out my last video I think it's around the 50 minute mark the trailer pops up it only goes for like a minute it's not very long probably even less I'm not sure um, so thank you for doing that and I also wanted to say thank you to everybody for commenting and subscribing and liking I'm almost at 800 subscribers which is so cool I think I'm about 800 sorry 792 ish or somewhere around there so that's really cool so hopefully soon I'll be there um, but yeah let's get on with the whips um, I've noticed that I've gotten through that cruise talking a bit quicker than I did last time which is good um, my battery was full in the camera when I first recorded this and I recorded it and then it was nearly empty so I'm hoping to get through this a bit quicker than I did before um, I've recharged it but who knows um, let's talk about whips so the first thing I'm going to show you is not the first thing I worked on but it is a um, it's a random whip so I don't kind of class this as one of my whips like it's not in my tracker my exit tr tracker on the app um, because it's a travel whip that I pick up rarely um, it's part of the Adorable Animals calendar from um, Cross Stitch Crazy, which was a freebie in, I think, the December 2016 issue. Um, yeah, I'm changing this around a bit because it is, there's a dog, um, weather themed. Um, and January is um, summer here and this is winter in January. So I've swapped it around a bit. So I'm doing August, but it's actually July in here. So I started this one on the plane on the way home from the cruise. So I didn't actually do any stitching on the cruise. This was on the plane and I got about two hours in. I'll show you this and I need to let a dog out. So this is what I got done. It's on 14 count Ada. Just wait a minute. And this is a um, needle binder from JKS Cross Stitch Supplies. as a freebie with an order. And that's how much of the... Um, bunny I got done so I'll pick this up whenever I do any kind of traveling or anything that's not very often um, but it's always nice to have something it's highly likely that very soon she will want to come straight back in so I may stop again now in here it's just a plastic bag thing um, I think I actually got this as like somebody had something that they sent to me in this I keep all of those bags and things because I'm always using them so um, in here I have a hoop the threads another piece of Ada for the next one and just a color list um, because I have it on a little thread sorter. Really? Let's get back onto our regular whips. So the first one that I worked on this month, um, the first lot were my cells. So the first one is the class schedule cell and I'll pop up a picture here of what it looked like last time. Um, this is being stitched on 16 count Ada in dusk by picture this plus and here is where we are now. So I worked on the April block and that was um, History of Magic. Needle minders are the Akio needle, needle minder that you could get with the kit. You could buy it with the kit or just buy it. And this is my Harry Potter one from Needle Minder Obsession. That's the block. I add in the names um, of the professors. as part, That's like my only kind of modification. Um, I love these blocks. I love how simplistic they are. Um, yeah, I really enjoy doing them. Um, a lot of people do big modifications. I don't see the need. That's just me. You do what you want. Um, Professor Bins technically is not in a house. Um, I'm trying to do all of the professor's names in house colors, um, like a pastel version, like chalk. Um, he's technically, no, there's nowhere listed of him in a house. So um, I kind of just drew the conclusion that he would probably have been in Ravenclaw if he was in any of the houses. Um, he is a ghost. He's been there for a very long time. Okay, the next one was the um, Legendary Creature Cell by Clouds Factory. Here's a picture of where I was last month. This is also one of Picture This Plus Ada in 16 count, but I don't remember the name. 
I need to write it down. Here is where we're at at the moment. So as you can see, we added two more for this month as per usual. I think at some point there's gonna to need to be three. 26 letters, two more months on the MB24. So I'm gonna to have to add some more in. There we go, A and F. So I did F first because it was easier to count that way. And then we've worked up. So hopefully from now on, we should be able to kind of stitch down, which is how I prefer to stitch anyway. So we have um, Enka and Fafnir. I have no idea if I pronounced those correctly, but that's how I've said them. Enjoyed those. I love this cell. I love both the cells this year. I've done a pretty good job picking them. Um, my needle minder broke when I last did this video. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get another magnet and stick it on and get a different needle minder for now for that one. So I can't tell you what it was. My next sale is one that I'm doing myself. Um, I bought this pattern last year and it was getting to the point where I'm like, I really want to do it and I haven't started it and that's really annoying. So I started it at the start of the year and I'm doing one king per month or one queen. So it's kings and queens of the UK. Here's a picture of what it was last time as well as what it will look like finished. Um, so yes, like I said, I'm doing one a month. And that includes the border that's around it, um, either above, beside, or below it. I do the border near it. This is on 32 Count Legata. Now, this fabric doesn't have a name. It was a Color Cascades Fabric of the Month exclusive, but I don't remember which month. If you're very curious, have a look back at um, some earlier videos and it will tell you. Probably January's update, because that's when I started it. Here we go. So we've got the four kings so far. No queens as of yet. They will come. Zoom you in a bit to see. This needle minder is from Ginger Stitch AU on Etsy or Ginger Stitcher, I never remember. So I worked on Stephen this month and I also did the flag here, the Britain UK, uh, Union Jack, sorry. He's got a bit of metallic in him. They all do have metallic. Um, so I'm trying to use up my DMC light effects. I know you're feeling me. I know you understand my pain. I love this fabric for this piece. The purple really suits. Um, it's not clashing with, with anything and it won't, so that's really good. So I will be stitching on the next one um, in May. So I should be able to get 12 done this year. And probably I'll do 12 again next year, I'm assuming. But we're only in April, almost May. Okay, the next whip I have to stand up to get. So excuse me. Um, I'll say this now. I The next whip I worked on was Epic Pokemon. So I'm gonna put in a picture of what it looked like last time and also what it's gonna look like finished. This is a free pattern, so I don't mind showing it. Oh, that will do, I think. I can't really get it any better than that. So here's where we are. As you can see, I've almost finished page nine. Um, there's about 700 stitches left on that one and then it will be finished. Then I go on to page 10 and that is a um, partial page so it shouldn't take as long. So I did 3,000 stitches on that this month which is about half a page. Um, so I'm just going to hold it there for a bit then I'm going to sit down and talk about it. This is very uncomfortable. Looks awesome hey. Looks so good um, on video. Okay, so my goal with that each month is to do half a page, so three, about 3,000 stitches. The goal for the whole year is six pages, um, one page every two months. I'm ahead of my goal by about a month and a half. Mm, more like a month and a little bit. Um, so I resolved last month to, if I get 3,000 stitches, I will stop and I will go to my focus whip just because like last month I got like 4,000 something stitches and that's awesome but I also have other projects I'd like to finish this year so um I wanted to make sure I just get that half a page which is like a lot there's a lot happening so that's really good um if I'm really feeling it I'm not going to make myself stop but 3,000 is a lot in a month I think so yeah happy with that we'll continue with that in May the next whip I worked on was my focus piece because I got those 3,000 stitches, so I moved on. This piece had a really random amount of time. It wasn't a week. 
um, it wasn't two weeks, it was just like a random bunch of days before and after the cruise, so I'm not 100% sure. I forgot to bring the, the photo of what it looks like finished, um, so I'm just going to put in a picture of what it looked like last time. This is Poppies in the Wind by Peacock and Fig. Um, it's being stitched on 32 count antique white even weave from Sew It All. And I finished. <laughs> I think I said last month I wasn't going to push myself to a finish, and I didn't. This was very easy stitching. So that's where we are. All finished up. Let me tell you about what happened. So this big part on this side stitched up really quick. I don't know why. It was a really, really quick stitch. Um, I just kept doing heaps in every day. I don't know. Maybe because there's only like seven colors in it. I'm not sure. Um, and then I came over here. I wanted to get to that edge. So then I came over here and did these two last petals and I got to the last one and I ran out of the last color. I had none left. I had none in stash. So I had to go and get another one. So in the meantime, I did the back stitch. It's all kind of, it's not really outlined, but it does have lines of the petals and things. It's almost like a watercolor effect, I think. Um, and I got that thread yesterday. Um, after work, I had a conference -y type of thing yesterday, um, and I finished it off. And then I did the back stitch, my signature's down there, and it was all done. So this is being donated to the RSL, which is the Return Services League here in Australia. Um, as you may know, my dad is a return veteran. Um, he fought in the Vietnam War um, when he was... 19 to 21 and um it's a really important subject to me um we've just had anzac day anzac day was on wednesday if you're not sure what anzac day is anzac stands for australian and new zealand army corps and for anyone that doesn't know that's how you say it. i i think in australia is corps not corpse um dad drilled that into me as a child <laughs> so um that's how i kind of say it um yeah, so, and they, this kind of, this day started in 1915 on the 25th of April. Um, the Anzacs, so the Australian New Zealand troops, um, a group of them went to Gallipoli, a lot of them did, um, in Turkey. And in the dawn, I guess, they jumped off their, sh their little boats and ran up onto the beach. And the Turkey army was up a cliff. So... As you can imagine, pretty big amounts of bloodshed. I'm just checking to see because my camera will stop recording soon. Um, yeah, a lot of the Anzacs died over the eight months that they were there. Um, it was a failed mission. They weren't actually supposed to go there and they didn't succeed with what they were doing because it was such harsh conditions to get up. Um, so they left. Um, it was the first time that Australia really had... Um, it's hard to explain, like, because we're, we're such a new country and we are compared to other countries, we didn't have our own... We had an army, but it wasn't like ours. It was British. So we were finally Australians and New Zealanders coming together, and it was us. And it was the first time that kind of had happened. And um, ever since then, on the 25th of April each year, we commemorate that day and we commemorate the lives of those soldiers that died as well as all Australians and New Zealanders that have died in war or have come back injured or ill or have fought at all or in peacekeeping operations as well. So it's an issue that's quite strong in my heart because of my dad. Um, the RSL is like an association for those returned veterans to um, work in the community and get support, organise Anzac Day um, services and things like that. Dad's been in it since we moved to this region, which was before I was born. So he's been in there for a long time. Um, he's done so much for them. And um, it's taken up a lot of his time. He went into retirement when I was born. Um, and that's kind of been his life ever since. So um, I wanted to do something for him that's quite small. Um, didn't take any sacrifice on my part. Um, I should have had it done quicker, if, in fact. Um, but it was, it's, it was a really therapeutic thing to do during this Anzac Day week. Um, it's a strong issue to me as a teacher of young children to make sure that they remember 
everything that happened that those people are not forgotten because we are losing our veterans from the Second World War and even Vietnam now. So um, it's really important to remember them and not to discuss whether war is right because I think we all kind of have a similar opinion about that. But um, to think about those people that do sacrifice so much, including their lives. Um, they sacrifice so much to, I wouldn't say to stop being invaded or anything anymore, but just to kind of do what they think is right. And um, I don't know, it's, it's a really important issue to me. So that's why I did that piece and that's why I'm donating it to the RSL, just to say thank you. And um, it's a beautiful piece. It's just gorgeous. So hopefully dad likes it because that's who I really, I don't really care about all the other people. I just want my dad to look like it. So hopefully he likes it. So I'm going to get that professionally framed and I'm going to give it to him to hang up and I'll be sure to um, get some pictures of it up in the RSL. Um, and even when it's just framed as well, which would be really cool. So after Poppy's, when I finished that yesterday, it was about 7 p.m. and I was doing my off the grid party because whenever I can, I do that. Now I haven't said yet in this video, but Matt's not here. He's been, he's away all weekend. He's on a fishing competition. So I get to have the weekend to myself, which means that I've been stitching. I've done all the washing. I've got my last one done, last one um, going now. And that includes some cruise stuff still. So. I'm excited to have that all finished and hung out. I put away heaps today as well, so I've done lots. Um, got the baby shower for Matt's niece. Oh, I can show you that too. I haven't even thought about that. I'm gonna grab that now actually while I'm thinking about it. Matt's brother's girlfriend, not the one that got engaged, another brother, is um, she's having her baby in end of May, start of June, sometimes around there. I did the elephant birth sampler for her. Um, so hopefully that'll, that's, that's one that's going to be finished soon too. Um, but I need to wait for their name and their um, date of birth. So I couldn't give them that at the baby shower. So I asked my sister to niche them something because I can't do that. Um, she showed me some examples. I picked one. We went and picked some wool and some buttons out. Um, as you can imagine, it's a cardigan. <laughs> it's a little cute little cardigan and a little hat to go with it. And I'm so excited to show you. So... If you want to know, it was stitched with Wolganic Knitter's Yarn. Good for the sheep, good for the earth, good for you. I don't know. Spun from 100% certified organic Australian Merino fleece wool. I'm just seeing if there's any. I don't understand wool. <laughs> so I'm just going to eight ply. There you go, it was eight ply. Spun, grown in Australia, spun in New Zealand. There you go. It was shade GRM8. Anyway, this is it's so small. It's just a little cardigan. I love it so much. Look at those cute little rainbow buttons and the rainbow stitches all the way through it. And she's done like little rainbow cuffs at the end there, which is so cute. It's so cute. And it's so soft, it's lovely. When I got it out of the bag, I went out to Matt and I said, it's so small. And he's like, yeah, but it's for a baby. I was like, shut up. <laughs> it's too cute. And then this is the little hat to go with it. So we made it a bit bigger. Obviously not newborn size. So we made it a bit bigger, so um, it will be good for later. Very exciting. That is off topic. I was talking about what I did after Poppy's, but I was saying that I had the weekend to myself. So seven o'clock, I finished Poppy's and I was tossing up between two things. I was gonna get Kings and Queens back out and do some water. And then I thought, no, I'm going to um, get out my next focus whip. And I will show you what that is right now. It is a Clouds Factory piece, another one. And it's London, walking in London. That's what it's called. Um, I have a question for you as well. Should I stitch this London bit? Um, that's what it looks like without it. That's with it. You don't need it to say London to know it is London, but I just don't know. What do you think? Um, let me know. This is, I'll put a picture in here of what it looked like last time, which would have probably been in February. I think that was the last time I had this out. Um, it's being stitched on a 32 count, even weave that's actually linen. From Sew It All, it's just a blue 
um, sky color. Here it is. That's where we're at now. My needle mind broke. It was another one. Um, but that was one that Matt made me. So that's okay. Okay, what have I done? Well, I have finished um, the tower bridge. I worked on this when I had done all the backstitch and everything for poppies and I was just waiting for that other thread. So I did some, some of that then and I finished this last night. Then I switched around to this, to the tree, and I finished that orange tree, which I love. So simple, but so awesome. And um, the eye. The eye was not tricky, but it was kind of annoying. Uh, not in a, I don't want to stitch this way in a, oh, I don't want to get this the wrong way. And I didn't get it wrong, so that's good. Did all the little pods. There's a pink color that goes, a one stitch in all the pods and then in the middle here, and then the eye will be finished. Then I keep moving on. So, I finished page one, which is, I think, something like, oops, it's got a bit of the gherkin in it. I think it's about that. And then I did page, then I'm on page two now. Um, I'll talk about my goals for this in plans, if I remember. I didn't remember in my last one, last try at filming this, so hopefully I remember this time. So I'll be working on that until the 1st of May when I pull out the cells again. And then it will be my focus till it's finished. Okie dokie. That's all my whips. Let's talk whole. Whole, whole, whole. I have some purchases and I have um, a gift. Yep, that's right. Um, boring start. Some beads. These are for white clover from Nora Corbett. I ordered the pattern and the embellishment pack from Color Cascade Fabrics. Um, and I've been waiting for these for a while. It wasn't like, oh my God, I need them to start. It was like, uh, I hope she remembers. <laughs> so they came, they are Mill Hill glass beads, 116. That's all I can see from here. They look like just the normal beads. They're a nice ready purpley color. Okay, I bought a pattern off eBay um, by Eileen Bennett from 1984. Um, and it's home is where you hang your needlework sampler. It is hand, I'll show you this part. That bit's not, um, but all of this, which is the actual pattern, is hand drawn. So um, never had a pattern like this. I've never had a sample like this before. And I think what I'm gonna do is cute it up a bit and get some brighter colors in there so it's not so brown. Um, as brown as my house is, because my house is from the 70s, I'm trying to get away from that. So I'm going to try and get some... I was thinking before of perhaps using some silks from Silks For You in this. Um, because if I got a whole bunch of colours that kind of go together, I'm, I can just kind of do whatever I want. So that will happen eventually. It's got to be something that I take my time with. Because each band has its own instructions. And I didn't realize this had specialty stitches in it. So some of the things it's got in there, long arm cross stitch, eye stitch, Mont Montan Grin cross stitch. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Two sided Italian cross stitch, satin stitch, straight stitch, running stitch, Irish, sti Irish stitch, I can't say it. Um, Algerian eye. Four sided stitch, which looks, they look easy. Algerian eye stitch, never done. Queen stitch, which are apparently horrible. How much is that? How many queen stitches are there? I can't even see it. Anyway, um, oh, it's where the strawberries are. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting to do eventually. But I will do it. It just, it's not something that I'm like dying to do straight away. Um, it'll go in the pile. So that's where everything goes. Dog's on the move. Hang on, let's see what happens. Uh, 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 come here. Don't go down there. She wants to go on the bed. Go in your bed. Go to your bed. Hey. Okay. okay, next thing I got was some DMC. This is from JK Cross Stitch Supplies. I get batches of DMC like this from here because it's so much cheaper. Um, and it is for Enchanting Mermaid. That's the Mirabilia we are starting for 
Um, Belinda's, <laughs> Belinda's birthday, an inch to cross stitch. That's being started on June the 6th. So I was getting my DMC. I'm not gonna get the beads and treasures and things for ages. Cause I'm gonna start it, but then I'm probably gonna put it away for quite a while. Cause I've already got my um, Renaissance Mermaid to do. So she'll get a tiny start and then she'll be kicked off. Next thing, are you gonna go straight there? If I stop patting you? Good girl. Okay. Next thing was my Lizzie Kate order. Now this came in about a day after I posted my last video, which was so annoying. Um, the first thing, was an eBay pattern that I found. Um, it's a snippet called Love My Dog. Um, I really like this. I think I'm probably gonna do it twice. And she's gone down there, I can't be bothered. Um, with their names there. I was thinking before as well that I might change the color of the kennel. Sky's collar is blue and Evie's is green, so I'm thinking of swapping that around. The other thing that I can do is swap it to pink and orange. Pink is Sky's name tags color and Evie has an orange one. So I could change it to that, but I'm not sure. But that's really cute. I don't know where I'll put them. We've got a little bit, like there's a couple of photos of them in here. Um, there's a cross stitch I did and a photo of. That's Sky. Evie's is over that side. Um, so I could put them there, but I don't know, but I have it, so that's exciting. The rest of them are from um, JK's, because they were cheaper. Another dog one is Doggy String. It's a snippet as well. ABCs of dogs. Love it, can't wait to do it. It's only got like eight colors in it, so. And one of them's mascara, and I'm pretty sure that I would just keep that as DMC. Um, I don't really see the point in a variegated black, because even just looking at it now, it just looks like black. So that's probably what I would do. Anyway, doggy string. Uh, the next one came with the uh, charm and linen, and this is a little stitch. It says stitch every day. Cute little pattern. The um, charm says made with love, and it goes up there. That'd be cool. The next is a series that I did not know I was going to get. I just kind of went for it. Um, I told this story before when I first filmed this, but I'll do it again. Matt and I are not inspirational quote people. We had this kind of running joke about people that really like inspirational quotes. Things, silly ones. Things like, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Stuff like that. I use that voice for them because they're dumb. Um, I don't like that quote, I think it's stupid, but um, that sounds mean, but I think you kind of get where I'm going here. Um, a lot of Lucy Kate stuff is inspirational quotes, and I do like a lot of them. I just wouldn't put them in my house. Um, it's not something that I'd really do. These are kind of inspirational-ish. They're more like reminders, and um, I think if I did them, I would probably put them somewhere where I am a lot. And I don't think Matt would want them kind of central. Um, I saw Nell from Little Yellow House Needle Crafts, Needleworks. I never remember. You know who I'm talking about. She's done this, or is doing this. So we've got Less is More series. So Fear Less, Hope More. Wine Less, Breathe More, which is my favorite one. Adele and I like that one. Uh, talk Less, Say More. And Hate Less, Love More. Um, there's obviously the border that you can get off the website. I'm tempted to do that. I don't know if I will because it is quite big, but we'll see when I get around to doing those. But I was excited to get them. I really like the um, little borders and things and motifs and stuff. So that's cool. And then the last thing that I got was um, one that you're not surprised that I got. It's dog lessons for people. Of course I was going to get this. Are you kidding me? So um, that doesn't have many colors either. I can't wait to do this. I think it's awesome and it's gonna go up somewhere prominent even though it is kind of inspirationally. It's okay, cause it's about dogs. I'm not gonna read it, but <laughs> I really like it. So there's Lizzie Kate. The next part of my haul is um, Fabric of the Month by Sparklies. I get this in 32 count Murano and it's the 18 by 27 piece. This is called Welcome to the Jungle. Bam, look at that. 
I'm just going to cover my face so you can look at it. Isn't it pretty? I, I can't remember if I was saying before, I can't remember if I've shown you this or not. But I don't really care. You can look at it again. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, many things could go on that. I'm yet to choose because I'm not kind of looking to do any starts at the moment anyway. But I'm um, very, very happy with that one. I haven't been disappointed yet. And I like this is kind of different from, from what I have in my stash. So very excited to see that. I seem to have a lot of blues um, in my stash. And I get why because mermaids are so popular at the moment. I'm just excited to get some other colors. Okay, getting to the end of the haul here. Um, these are two stash unload patterns um, from Aussie Stash Unload. I'm not really, go I'm still part of the group, but I'm not really going on there to look at the moment because I kind of went a little bit crazy. Um, so these are the last two I'm probably gonna get in a while. Um, the first one is Ink Circles, This Heart of Mine. And I want to do this in variegated colors, a bit brighter than this is, I think. Um, it's not big. It's I think it's six by six inches or something like that. It is um, 95 by 102 stitches. So it's not very big at all. Um, the next one I really like because it's kind of Celtic. It's by Wizard by the Wind and it's called Bound Hearts. Now, that's one version or you can stitch the negative space. I think it's called negative space. And do it that way and stitch it all in so there's two options there it's kind of Celtic um, again I would do this in some kind of variegated or silk and this again wouldn't take me very long I think it's 90 by 90 so um yeah that's exciting to have I like those kind of patterns um, but yeah I'm not going to get any more from there for a while that was a bit dangerous okay let's keep moving on Next thing is so special. I um, I have some project bags, guys. I didn't make them. <laughs> um, I ordered these from a lady called Taryn. And now I met Taryn at the cross-stitching retreat in February for Mirabilia um, that I went to. Um, she came and had a chat with me, Belinda. And Belinda actually purchased um, a bag, I think a set. I don't remember if she bought a set or just a bag from Taryn and showed it in her last video and I went, boom, I need to get some. I've been thinking about it. I've had her little card in my wardrobe for ages. I'm like, I need to actually go and um, check her out. So I sent her a message and I said, hey, Taryn, I don't know if you remember me, but we met at the retreat and I really want to get some bags. Um, she was like, you kidding? I remember you, of course I do, blah, blah, blah. It's like so sweet. Um, and I said, I'm, I like orange and I like dogs. What can you do for me? So she sent me a bunch and um, I said, can we go on the cute, uh, cutesy style route? So, um, like cartoon dogs, stuff like that. I'm not really into like realistic looking dogs for fabric. I like the cartoon stuff and orange as well. And I just said, let's go cute animals, whatever you got, show me. <laughs> so she showed me a bunch and I died over two of them. So I was only going to get one set and I ended up getting two. I got the... Um, jewelry pulls with them as well for the zips um she said do you want to have a look at them and choose them i said can you just choose some that go with the colors and she did an awesome job so the first one i have my walking in london in i'm going to show you what it comes with so the set comes with a bag accessory bag and a grime guard are you kidding that's the best thing ever <laughs> I got this adorable sausage dog print. That's the pull. And that is the same on the big bag as well. So that's the accessory bag. Oh, it's not open. That would be handy if I actually looked at that. That's just polka dots on the inside. She sent me um, ideas for lining fabric as well. So I just chose a couple. Um, that's the grime guard. Coolest thing about this is that she said, do you prefer wide or narrow? So she gives you the option. I like mine a bit wider so I can tuck some more fabric in. Whereas some people like them narrow so they have more stitching space. So I said, can I have them a bit wider? And it's the perfect size for me. It's incredible. The most perfect size. Um, and this is an 11 by 11. And this is the bag. So it has the plastic cover so you can see inside. There's a zip pull. That's what we look like. It's so cool. I love it. And there's the lining fabric in there as well. 
um, it fits the 11 by 11 perfect. I had it in there yesterday because I was finishing poppies and it zipped up fine. It's perfect. Really well made. It's really good quality. Love that. The second one I got was this one. <laughs> These are some sassy llamas that I couldn't deal with. So I had to have them. And it's orange. It's like a peach. Love this ring pull. Not ring pull, zip pull. It's gorgeous. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a 8 by 11 Q-snap color. Because I didn't want to get two 11 by 11s because I don't need to. So I realized today I don't actually have a spare 8 and a spare 11. I've got a 17 because I bought a 17 by 17 because I'm stupid and I've got a 6. But I want, it, I want an 8 by 11. So I'm going to um, get, I think I'm just going to get the two like the two eights and the two, you know, you can get the two pack. I think I'm just going to do that so that I can just have an eight by 11. There's those and here's the bag. We chose a teal fabric, nice and simple. There's the pool again. Love it. So good. I think I'm going to put one of the cells in here. I'm thinking the um, Clouds Factory one because it has its, I bought the kit. So I can put all of the floss in here. So excited. Thank you, Taryn. You were so awesome to work with and so lovely. She even sent me this needle minder, which is fabric. So she's made that herself. Link below. I recommend her, especially to Australians. Such good prices, like unbelievably good prices. So have a look down below. Last bit of haul is a gift. I received this yesterday from a beautiful, beautiful lady called Dawn. Um, we have been chatting on and off for quite a while. She sent me a lovely card with a beautiful message inside. And she'd actually messaged me after my last video about the Frosty Forest series from Country Cottage Needleworks. And she said, I've got some, do you want them? I don't know if she'd stitched them or if she was going to and she's not, I'm not 100% sure. And I said, I'll take them. So I, <laughs> I um, took them off her um, and she gave me three of them, which is so good because I don't have to get three now. It's awesome. So we have Snowy Deer. We have um, Snowman's Cottage. And my favorite, Raccoon's Cabin. So that's not all. She also included a gift card to Spotlight. I was a bit confused as to why in the card she said that she went to go and get me a whole bunch of white for this and they were out. So she got me a gift card for $10 to um, go and get it. How sweet. So lovely people in the stitching community. I can't deal. So again, I know I've already thanked you, Dawn, but thank you again. It's so nice. Um, didn't have to do that extra bit as well. So thank you very much. That's the rest of my haul done. So let's talk goals, plans. Did I meet my April goals? Absolutely, I exceeded them. I was very, very happy with that. Um, the May goals, May. I want to get 3,000 stitches done, my blocks for my cells, a king. And I've said for walking in London, I'd like to get that page two done, which means that I need to finish the eye off. There's a park bench and then there's half of a building or about a quarter of a building. I should be able to do that quite easily. I might even get it done this weekend because I'm going to stay up again and stitch because that's what I do. Um, so I should be able to get that done quite easily. If I do, I will reevaluate and perhaps say half of the next page or something like that. But this should not take me very long to do. I'd be very surprised if I'm still doing this in July. Um, yeah, I can't see why I would be. Um, so yeah, that's exciting to get that finished soon as well. Um, I've talked about Magol's. I'm not doing mania. It's kind of sad because I love mania and I love the hecticness of it, but I'm so, um, I'm really focused this year on getting finishes. Um, I know I have a start coming up in June. It's a special one that's been in the plans for a few months. So I'm okay with doing that. Like I said, she's only going to get a few days work and then she's out. <laughs> she's going to go in the cupboard for a while, um, until I finish a few other things. Um, and that's okay. I can just live vicariously through the other ladies that are doing that sale. Um, so I'm just really focused on getting my finishes and getting my whips down to a manageable size for me. 
at the moment with the poppies finish I'm at 14 um, I'm gonna go back to 15 with the enchanting mermaid but that should soon creep down a bit the birth sample will be done soon and so we're walking in London so that takes me that will take me to 13 um, which is super exciting I'd love to um, so that takes me to 13 then the sales will be finished this year which will take me to 11 I've got one more whip that I'd like to finish this year apart from walking in London and that will take me to 10. So I really wanted to get to 10 by the end of the year. So that'll be awesome. Um, if I'm going to finish walking in London so quickly, which I feel like I will, I might be able to get another focus whip in because uh, I've already kind of chosen my focus whips for next year because I'm insane. Um, and there's a couple that should be fast to stitch up. So I'll bring one into this year, but I need to get there first. But I'm, I just get excited with finishes. It was, it was so cool to have a finish finally and poppies I started last mania so it was nice to finish it before mania started this year um so sales in the first week of May um then Pokemon the second week London the third and Pokemon the fourth that leaves me from the 28th to the 31st um with some spare days what I usually do there is that if my king is not finished I'll finish him there um because the sales week I have to do two months worth plus um so two monthly blocks and the uh the legendary creatures one is two characters so it does take a little bit of time plus the king sometimes the king doesn't get finished or it could i don't think i've had that yet but it, it's likely so if that's not finished i will finish that in the last little bit of the month um if i need to do more stitches on pokemon if i haven't quite got to the 3000 i'll do it then and then if i've done those two things i'll work on london because it's my focus whip um, I hope that makes sense. So I'm really excited with my city at the moment. I think because I've got that finish. Um, it does it does make me very excited. Um, a couple of little more, one more thing, and then I'm doing my giveaway. If you don't remember, I do giveaways now for a little bit. I'll talk about that in a minute. Two share that's. The first one is to the only kind of new person I've watched since my last video. And I'm still catching up from being away. So after this, once I pack up, edit, and when it's this video is uploading, I'll be watching for Steven stitching. So um, I'll get I'll, when I get caught up, I start looking for new people. So hopefully I can get there soon. Um, but the only new person I've watched since my last video is Cherie Z. She's an Australian stitcher from Canberra. Um, if you like shoulder lanes, you need to watch this lady. <laughs> she stitches so so many shoulder lanes, and um, she really loves them. So awesome stitcher. She's got um, two videos out, I think. I've just watched the second one um, and she gave me a really nice shout out in that as well so that was really sweet but um, yeah that's the only new person I've watched since um, but I did want to give an, a special shout out to Mandy Youngblood um, she's on here as Mandy Youngblood and she's also on Instagram but I don't remember her name but I will link her floshy below and Cherie's below as well um, she's amazing I do really love her videos and her projects are so cute love love seeing her progress um and she did a really cool thing in her last video um which i watched yesterday like i've watched everyone's yesterday apparently um and she spoke about my pokemon which was really sweet and she was really excited about how much progress i had done um i really really love her videos hour and a half it was awesome i love the long ones <laughs> i really do um so yes so thank you very much mandy for your lovely words um so sweet and now we are friends on Facebook. So that's exciting. Okay, let's talk giveaway. So last month, I sub I've i told you that I was gonna be giving away some patterns very similar to what Mindy Stitchy does. Um, these are magazine patterns and a couple of other ones that I'm not gonna do and I don't want to throw them out. I wanna give them away because I like them but I'm just not gonna stitch them. And they're also my Geeky Stitching Co. patterns. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that a while ago I was subscribed to their monthly box. Um, I stopped that and I have all their patterns and they're just not things that I'm looking to stitch at the moment. So I'd like to give them away and I have talked to Jess and she said that that's fine. So um, obviously because I think, I think it's fine anyway because I'm not selling them, but I just wanted to check. So the way this works is that each month I'm gonna show you two. One will be a Geeky Stitching Co. and one will be a magazine one. Until I run out of magazine ones, then I'll do two Geeky Stitching Co. because I have quite a few of those. Um, I will show you them. I will say what you need to say in the comments to be entered and then I'll choose people for my, in my next video. Um, 
they will be folded up in an envelope because they are paper. If you don't like that, please do not enter and don't get angry with me when you get them. Um, I'm happy to post everywhere um, considering it will be a letter, so it won't be too expensive, which would be good. Um, please be 18 um, You need because you need to give me your address. Um, don't say giveaway in the comments because I will delete it. So, what were the patterns from last time? They were this one from a magazine from Cross Stitch Crazy in May 2016. It's a Stitch Rovia, not Stitch Rovia, Satsuma Street piece, which is Wizard of Oz. Um, they've just put it in the magazine, which they do. Um, I don't know how many people entered because I, I did a really random way of picking a winner, which I don't know if I'll do again. But anyway, the person who won this is Heather. Oh, Link is my homeboy. So I'm so excited that you won this, Heather. Um, I don't know if I have your address. I'm going to get it from you again anyway, and I'm going to start a bit of a Stitcher, Stitcher address book because I keep forgetting people's addresses. So I'm going to do that, and that will be sent to you. So i um, very excited for you to have that, and I can't wait to see you stitch it up because I like to stalk you. That was creepy. Anywho, so that will be sent to Heather ASAP. The next one is the Geeky Stitching Co. one, which was your so sweet. Um, I have stitched this one up and I gave it to my mum. It looks really good, by the way, when it's stitched up. Um, and this one is going to Darla Beckerson. Darla has commented on all of my videos. She's so sweet. Um, I didn't even mean that. I didn't even mean that. How amazing is that? I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Sorry, this is perfectly going to you, Darla. So um, just let me know your address and I'll put you in my Stitcher um, address book too. And I'll send this to you um, as soon as I can. So they're the ones from last month. Let's go with these ones. So the magazine one is another one from Cross Stitch Crazy. And I have a feeling that um, Bendy Stitchy gave this one away recently too. I think she did. Um, it's a mandala. It's made into a cushion here, but it definitely doesn't need to be. And this is actually designed by Tiny Modernist, which is pretty cool. This was from February 2017. If you would like to stitch this, can you please say, I would like to stitch that mandala. And if you want to know how to spell that, it doesn't say there. M-A-N-D-A-L-A. M-A-N-D-A-L-A. Mandala. It's really nice. The pattern is, it's like a little bit creased on the edges where I've ripped it out because apparently I can't do that properly, but it doesn't cut out any of the patterns, so that's fine. So that's that one. I would like to stitch the mandala. And the Geeky Stitching Co for this month is You Make Me Believe in Magic. Really good one for my fruits out there. Really sweet. This is a lot of stitching in here, just so you know but um, nothing too difficult. If you would like to stitch, you make me believe in magic, can you please write, I would like to stitch the magic. And I'll know you want to be entered. Remember, please don't put giveaway in the comments. So I'll draw that at the end of May. Um, they're awesome. I'm thinking of doing some of these on my Instagram too, because I have so many. Um, so I'll probably do that in my Instagram story or something. Um, that's just Laura X stitches too, by the way. Oh, also my two cousins discovered, that, well, two of my cousins discovered that I had YouTube the other day. So hi, Thomas and David, if you're watching. I doubt you are because you were very surprised that it's just me talking. Yep. Anyway, that's my giveaway for next month. So please enter below with those comments and you'll be entered and I'll be able to draw that out next month. The way I did the... Um, excuse me, the way I figured out who won this time is that I went to the random comment picker and I just kept clicking until somebody came up who, who entered. It took a little bit of time because <laughs> I kept picking the same people who hadn't entered and I finally got to two people that had. So next time I think I'll just um, do the random number generator one. It's a bit easier. That's everything I have for you. Um, fair bit of stuff today. And I'm happy with this one. So I'm going to edit it and upload it. Hopefully it won't take too long. I'm not going to add too many crazy bits and pieces in. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'm very motivated with my stitching at the moment. And I'm excited to share that with you um, each month. I wish I could do these more often, but 
there just wouldn't be enough to show and um, I don't know I think I'd just be waffling too much but anyway I'm going to edit pack up hopefully this goes off without a hitch um, and I can upload it to YouTube tonight um, probably as I'm eating dinner because it will probably take that long it's four o'clock so who knows um, but thank you again so much for watching I'm so excited um, to see all your videos um, if you have a YouTube channel and I haven't um, subscribed or you don't know if I've watched your videos and if you want me to just leave a comment and I'm happy to do that when when I'm caught up because <laughs> I want to just get through these last few people I think I'm about halfway through the cruise like uh, around the 17th or 18th of April at the moment so once I'm all caught up um, I will have a look um, I've been quite selective with who I subscribe to lately because um, it got really overwhelming and I was watching people um, that I didn't like I didn't connect with their stitching I've talked about this before I don't want to go too crazy into it but um, I generally subscribe to people that um, I'm friends with anyway or I love their stitching or I love the way they talk about their stitching or something like that um, so yeah I hope that's not offensive or anything I'm just choosing who I subscribe to so I don't get too crazy um, but yeah I'm excited to come back at the end of May and show you what I've done and I'm excited to see everybody that's doing Stitch Mania um, and I'm going to live vicariously through you um, <laughs> and enjoy all your starts or all, all your whips all your monogamousness you know what I mean okay thank you very much for watching in and I'll see you at the end of May for another update happy stitching bye